What's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. I am Jungle. Um, this is my little corner on the YouTube plant community space where I just kind of document my plant journey and also share other plant related content. If you like those kind of contents, uh, go ahead and leave a subscribe and also um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm becoming a little bit more um, active on there so I'll leave a link on there as well. So I want to share with you all some care tips for the Dracaena Lemon Lime um, but it's probably going to be applicable to other Dracaenas as well. So I've actually had this plant for three years now. Um, the Dracaena Lemon Lime has these kind of neon green and green striped leaves with its cane stalk. I want to preface by saying I'm not a plant expert. Um, I don't advertise myself as a plant expert. I'm more of a plant enthusiast. So these care tips are more from my experience and my experience only. So um, you might have a different experience uh, because of different living conditions. So um, just use this as a guide per se. And I want to make sure that before I share any care tips with you all that I've had the plant for at least a year uh, just to make sure that um, I fully understand the plant's needs and that's the kind of the beauty of this plant journey is that you get to learn about all these plants and what their needs are and of course they're beautiful. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'll be talking about light, water, soil, humidity, fertilization, and propagation. So if you're only interested in one of these topics, uh, I'll leave a timestamp in the description below so you can go and skip ahead. Let's talk about light. So the Dracaena Lemon Lime actually thrives in more of medium to bright indirect light. Um, it can tolerate some direct sun uh, from maybe an east window getting some uh, morning sun when the, the sun's actually uh, rising. Um, but you don't want it to ex to be exposed in sun for too long because it can actually scorch the leaves. And it can also tolerate low light. Um, but what I mean by that is that you don't necessarily want to be putting this in a corner in a dark room. Um, it will still need some light. What you'll see is that in a low light condition, it will still survive but it will not thrive. So what I mean by thrive is it's not gonna, really going to be um, showing any new growth and you'll see as well as that it'll actually lose some of its variegation um, as you can see here I don't know if you'll able to see but it will become darker as opposed to like these newer ones that are more neon green leaves so if you put it in a darker uh, setting it will lose some of its variegation but if you bring it in a bright light setting, then it'll have its neon green leaves again that it's known for. Now let's talk about water. So I only really water this guy when it's fully, fully dry. And what I mean by dry is I actually take a moisture meter and put it down in the soil itself. And I want to make sure that the moisture meter actually reads around it too. If you don't have a moisture meter, go ahead and take your finger and stick it to the top two inches of the soil itself. Um, the soil is sticking to your finger, that means that if there's still some uh, moisture left in the soil for the water to take. Um, so the plant is going to be fine and you don't need to water it. You want to make sure that the soil is dry between waterings to prevent overwatering and to prevent a root rot. But when it is time to water, I actually take it to our bathroom and give it a good shower. Um, this accomplishes two things. First, it gives the plant a good drink of water. Number two, it's able to um, clean off the leaves and give it a good shine because there's just a lot of foliage here and I don't wanna go eat leaf by leaf to be honest with you. So the easiest way to do that is just putting it under the shower, um, rinsing off the leaves and gives it enough, a good shine. Uh, let's talk about soil. Um, this plant likes an airy soil from my experience. To be honest with you, um, when I first had plants like three years ago, I was honestly nervous about giving them root rot. So what I actually did was put all my plants in a succulent slash cactus mix. So this guy is actually in a succulent cactus mix um, to make sure that it get, there's enough airiness on there and it doesn't get any root rot. Um, but if you're using a regular potting mix, 
I'll go ahead and mix that regular potting mix with you know 50 50 of the cactus succulent mix or take you know pumice or perlite just to get increase the porosity of the soil let's talk about humidity uh, the Jacina lemon lime actually loves humidity um, but it can tolerate lower humidity and I can just speak from experience because when I first had this plant I actually put it in a corner by a vent and during my first year in the winter it was actually right next to an air vent like right here or right next to it and so there's a lot of hot air kind of by the plant itself so the humidity around the plant was very low and it did fine um, but what you'll see is that when it does have lower humidity um, it will start to have some crispy tips um, if that bothers you you can just go ahead and take scissors and just snip it off but uh, honestly it doesn't bother me the plant is very resilient um, so it can pretty much tolerate any humidity but loves high humidity let's talk about fertilization uh, to be honest with you during my first two years with this plant I actually did not fertilize it um, I was very new to taking care of plants so I didn't really fertilize any of my plants but this summer I actually fertilized it with a well-balanced fertilizer from miracle Grow, and I could tell once I fertilized it it loved it and actually sprouted a lot of new growth on top um, so I kind of regret not ever fertilizing in my first two years but hey it's part of plant journey and you kind of learn as you go so um, I fertilize it pretty much every time I water it and primarily because I don't really water this guy often so I want to make sure that it does get fertilized when I do water it so let's talk about propagation so I myself have not personally propagated this Jacina um, mainly because I want this plant to grow taller um, but if you feel as if it's getting too tall um, then what you can do from what I've seen and read online is that you can actually cut off the tops of the Jacina um, that's you can pretty much cut it in line with the leaves itself and you know put it in water to uh, water propagate it and then put it into soil and then what you'll see then is that you'll actually still put out new growth from where you've cut it so you don't have to worry about that and from what I've seen as well is that it will sprout maybe a couple of branches from that cut itself but as I said I want to have mine uh, taller so I have not propagated it some other uh, things I have for this plant is that don't worry too much about the bottom leaves falling um, and dropping off um, that's essentially pretty normal for I believe all plants um, they're the older leaves so they pretty much come and go um, as long as it's putting out new growth that's fine if you're seeing that the top leaves are falling then there might be issues there but uh, if the bottom leaves are falling that's completely okay um, you'll see in the stores that you will have like longer cane stalk and that's probably because the bottom leaves have fallen off and it just depends on the aesthetic that you're going for really but to me it doesn't really bother me when the bottom leaves have fallen off I think that's all the information I have for this plant. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Um, but if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, and look out for other plant related videos. Peace.